Something I love about a shared document like this graded pl grading planning tool is that allows my colleagues and I to collaborate and to reflect on what assessments we're choosing to use in our grade book for a unit. So I'm gonna share how we use this. So this is the grading planning tool for 6.1 and it's already filled out with the assessment opportunities that are called out in OpenSciEd's overall unit assessment table. So we see all the assessment types for each of the lessons. There's eight lessons in this unit. The first thing that we are gonna do is we're going to be thinking about where we are in the storyline at each of these parts. Are the students doing the sense making and figuring out, or are they at a point where we're hoping they can now explain part of the phenomenon? So in our um, grade, we categorize our grades as either process or product. So we're thinking about whether or not um, it's something that's like a small classwork type as we're figuring things out, we label that process, or is it where we're asking students to be able to explain it's more evaluative Then we call it a product grade. So we first look for the summative assessments. We know we're gonna use these for product grades. And there are um, two at the end of this unit. So we've taught this unit multiple times. So I'm going to add in right away the point values that we used in the past for these. If this was the first time that we were looking at this unit, we would spend some time pulling up the rubric and the scoring guidance and working through how this would work for our grade book. Uh, but what I am going to do, one of the things I love about this tool is I'm going to leave a part or a comment for my grade partner right here. Um, last year, we had noted that this transfer task assessment, Portrait Through Glass, was pretty challenging for a lot of our sixth graders at the beginning of the year. And we left a note that we wanted to add in um, more scaffolds. So we wanted to add in sentence starters, et cetera. So I'm gonna leave that so that um, we have that as a conversation piece. And the previous one, that final explanation, the students, that's the first time they're writing an explanation. Um, again, we found it really helpful last year to do this digitally. So I'm going to leave a note for my grade partner and co-teachers that we're going to submit it through Google Classroom and that we need to update our CER rubric that we use. We want to just make sure it's in there. So this is an ongoing conversation that we have as we're going through. There's also one more summative assessment. Mm. It's, it's labeled as a midpoint assessment here in lesson five, where the students come up with a consensus model when figuring things out. We're going to use that for our grade book, but based on our experiences in the past, we are going to not make that a product grade. We're going to call that a process um, grade because at this point, some students um, are still kind of wrestling with those ideas. One more thing I want to make sure I note down here for my colleague and I is that when we're doing our product grades, we always include opportunities for students to revise and resubmit. And that might look different with different um, assessments. So I'm going to just leave a note as well in here, right? So we need to think through the revise resubmit that we used from last year and see if, if we like it or if we wanna go back. Right, so we're going to do that for um, our explanations. Okay, so that's our first step. Our second step is to go back and to think about where we want to pause and add something into our grade book. So all of the other um, assessments that are called out in this unit, this unit's really short, are formative assessments. Um, and ideally, we wouldn't want to grade those, but we have to have some grades in our grade book. So we're gonna think about how we're gonna do this. So our first decision was the initial diagram the students do. It's a pre-assessment. Again, ideally, we do not want to evaluate this for students' understanding, right? These are just the ideas they're getting out there, their original thinking, helping them brainstorm questions. Um, so we're gonna, we are going to put it in our grade book, but we're going to make it a process grade. And in the notes, I'm writing for completion only. Um, the only thing we might do, since we talk so much about labeling and remind them, is 
we might say 4.5 out of 5. They don't have labels on there. Uh, the driving question board, we're not going to use in our grade book. Um, but we are, when I looked back from last year, um, we did add in one more thing in lesson one. So I'm going to use the fact that I can edit this document and add a row. And I'm going to put in what we did last year. So we used related phenomenon photo. We had students take a picture of something related they saw in their community or at home. And we just made this a really small process grade, two points. Um, but I'm going to put in the notes, submit through Google Classroom, made it a lot easier to do this digitally. And then I'm going to write the, the message for students um, is, uh, we want to be able to like acknowledge that they submitted this. So thank you for submitting your related phenomenon picture. We'll share these in class tomorrow. So we can really quickly send this message out to all the students digitally. Uh, and we put this in our notes so that my grade partner and I and our co-teachers, anybody can kind of look at this and see the message we chose to use. This is something that is not called out in Open Syed, though. So I'm going to take my little shading tool and just shade it so I know it's something that we chose to do. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the rest of these assessment opportunities and make decisions for ourselves and our grade team. So I've gone ahead and filled out the rest of this table based on um, our work with this unit last year. So you can see that a lot of the self-assessment and formative assessment um, opportunities that are called out, we chose to not use in our grade book. We're using that for the students to have practice and for us to give students feedback, but not as a grade. Um, we did add in, we like to add in opportunities for students to reflect on their norms, just a really small process grade, um, but it gives the students a chance to reflect. Uh, so you'll see we added that in a few different times after students, particularly in this first unit, after they're in scientist circle to really think about that. Um, and we give them a note in their response that, you know, we'll share shout outs or suggestions for improvement together in class. So you see that. So again, we're choosing not to evaluate or grade their progress trackers or any kind of self-assessment. Um, we don't evaluate or grade the handouts or their peer feedback work as a grade. But again, we're talking about a lot and giving them feedback. Um, and then a final thing that we add in at the end um, is a process, just a process grade for students to do a final unit reflection. And here's another place where I added in a comment we have a, re a unit reflection that we built that we really like with questions, but we want to always update it with students' consensus models um, from this year. So this is a work in progress. We try to get better every year, but it's great to have a starting point and help us sort of plan out. And then the, the thing that is so wonderful about this tool for us is that we can constantly be editing and reflecting and adding to it or deleting from it um, as we try to improve in our classroom. And the comment features just let us be having, be able to have an ongoing um, conversation about what we're doing in our classrooms.